Let's talk about the Crusader Journal. Welcome to Average Joe's. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Howdy y'all, Cole Care here with Average Joe's Tabletop. And today we're gonna to take a look at the new GW produced Crusader Journal for if you're getting into narrative play. <clears throat> it's got a pretty nice cover. It's like this little faux leather. Um, kind of feels like a little nice journal you'd pick up from Hobby Lobby or Amazon or something like that. You know, not just this cardstock or cardboard kind of cover. It has a nice um, durable little cover for it. Probably not the most durable, but um, will do what it needs to be done. Inside here you got your ribbons that you can mark your pages. And the pages inside just pretty much consist of every like just the same two page reproduced over and over again. Uh, this is where I think is a little bit of a design flaw uh, in the book. Like when you open it up, the very first page is a um, your force sheet where you put your force together. The next page is a crusader card, then another force sheet, and another crusader card, and on and on and on. Um, what kind of would have been a little bit better is if maybe they did you know, because you can have up to 15 units on your, you know, force sheet, if you look here. Uh, if they had done 15 Crusader cards, then a force sheet, and then 15 Crusader cards, a force sheet, and on and on and on, it would have kind of made it a little bit easier to organize, because you got to have a, a Crusader card for every unit, so you're constantly flipping back and forth of, okay, here's my first... Crusader sheet is my captain, and then my chaplain, and then now my sanguinary ancient, and then a squad of intercessors. It would have been nice just to have them all boom, 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 uh, nice and close. And then at the end, you have your Crusader force card where you put everything together just to kind of do your tallies for each battle that you fight. Uh, one thing, too, that kind of could have been a little bit better designed is having this uh, the agenda tallies where you're tracking during battle and then the total <clears throat> it just it seems like if you're reusing the same crusader card for your character say my ca my captain here I would you know tally his agendas for that match and then you got to kind of go back and erase it and it just seems this could have been executed a little bit better. I mean, it's nice to have it all in, in one single book. I guess one thing that you could have done, because they have it in the, the rule book itself, is photocopy those Crusader cards and, and Force cards and kind of put them in your own like nice leather-bound three-ring binder or make your own journal. <clears throat> so for what this book gives you, it's nothing that you can't get out of the, the rule book. Uh, but it is, you know, it's just kind of convenient to have it all here. And it's in this nice size where when you go to run your narrative games, you're not carrying around, if you did a three-ring binder with those full full 8.5 by 11 sheets in it, it doesn't take up much space. So that's another convenient thing is it's nice, it's pliable, it's light. And you have a ton of pages where you can do lots and lots of entries. So if you're... As your force grows, when you increase your power level um, and add more units, or you want to run another force, it just has tons of pages for you to be able to do that. <clears throat> but if anyone hasn't looked at the the Crusader narrative features, it's got it's it's kind of a unique thing, and it, it seems a lot more fun than than the narrative stuff. I never really got into it because it just it didn't seem as is in depth and is involved is, is this, so it's really neat. Um, when you start out, when you build your Crusader Force, <clears throat> you start out with what's called requisition points. You have five of them. You can use those to purchase various things for your your characters, or you can purchase more, your increase your supply limit, which is your power level, which will let you take more, uh, take more units. Uh, but like for my force with my captain, I used two requisition points on him to, to give him a relic and a warlord trait, and I did the same thing with my chaplain. I gave him a relic and a warlord trait, 
So my captain has Artisan of War, since I'm obviously going to run Blood Angels, so I'll get a, you know, extra damage to the weapon that he's equipped with. And then gave him the Angel's Wings, so there's no Overwatch, I can reroll failed charges. And then like with my Chaplain, I gave him Gift of, Gift of Foresight, so now he has a, a Feel No Pain, and then also the Gleaming Pinion, so I get two extra to my charge, <clears throat> and I can jump out of contact, shoot, and jump back into uh, to the fight phase. So that's one nice thing for the chaplain. And then for like my Sigmarnary Ancient, I spent one point on him to give him a relic, uh, the Wrath of Ball, which gives us plus two to our movement if we're equipped with a jump pack. So you can see it kind of makes it unique in that you're not restricted to how if you're doing an open play or tournament base, you know, you only get those two relics or you only get three relics if you spend the extra CP on the two or the three. This one, when you earn your requisition points, for as many characters you have is as many relics you can give or as many warlord traits as you can give. And what's awesome too is as these guys level up, these characters, they can have their relics that come from the Blood Angels Codex, but then they can take another one of the relics that, that comes out of the, the rule book, the Crusader relics, and they do various things where... Uh, adding one to leadership, uh, psychic powers can't be targeted against this person, uh, they're getting a lower and vulnerable save, uh, just a lot of cool stuff. So you can have a, your captain run around with two relics and his warlord trait, and then the same thing for all the other HQ choices or characters, like my Sanguinary Ancient, I can give him warlord traits because he has the character keyword, and I can give him another relic because of having that character keyword. And then with your your troops choices like my three intercessor squads as they level up i can give them various weapons or various buffs as they gain their experience and move up um, a level up to like i think you can have six different buffs per character and these range anything from adding one to movement distance or giving them a weapon that uh, gets an extra you know one to ap or extra damage uh, so there's a lot of great stuff, a lot of fun ways to kind of build a force and, and make it unique and make it your own. Uh, but when you start out with 50 power levels, so my force is itty bitty right now. I have a captain with a storm shield and a thunder hammer. I have my chaplain who just has the, the crozeris and an inferno pistol. My sanguinary ancient who is using um, the, an incarmine sword and a regular just angel angelus bolter. And he has his banner, and then my three troops choices are three squads of intercessors, all with the sergeants having thunder hammers. And then I have two other elite choices in my death company of five, that has five thunder hammers, and my sanguinary guard unit of four, which has all power fists. So right now I'm you know, going to try to get my first game in here pretty soon and have another video kind of tell you how it goes and, and the fun of giving everybody their experience and if anyone levels up kind of the new traits that I give everybody <clears throat> but this is the little crusader journal um, makes it convenient another thing is, is when looking at your individual character cards you have your agenda tallies and your agendas when you're playing narrative it basically is just like your secondary objectives if you're playing a, a match game or an open play uh, kind of thing you just give specific units the agendas that they have to accomplish so i mean you can have up to you know right now i have one two three four five six seven eight uh units and that could all have an agenda each so we're talking tons of things i could run around to try to do with my guys to to earn some extra experience for them so it, it's it's a neat looking game mechanic um journal is nice you know, it's not needed, but it makes it a little more convenient. But uh, I'll give you a, a look at the Crusader Force that I put together. Um, the only downside is I still have one Intercessor Squad that's uh, kind of being put together, and I'm waiting on the Thunder Hammers to swap out my Sergeant's Chain Swords. But I'll give you a brief overview and let you kind of look at, at those models and see what they have to offer and how they will grow as we do more and more Crusader recap videos. Thanks for tuning in to guy today, guys. Happy hunting. So like I said, here is my Crusader force. Um, right up here, I got my Smash Captain, Thunder Hammer Storm Shield. There's the Chaplain with the Infernal Pistol. Here's Archaeon, the Crozius. 
Uh, here's one of the squad of intercessors that I haven't got to paint yet. They are on my list of things to do. I got a hammer coming in that I'll replace that chain sword with. So we'll have a thunder hammer on the sergeant right there. <coughs> here's the next squad of intercessors. Again, the chains, so once I'm done filming this, that chain sword will be replaced with a thunder hammer and the other squad of intercessors. Again, he is being replaced too as soon as I'm done filming. Then back here, I got my elite choices. There's my death company with five thunder hammers. Uh, my sanguinary ancient with his relic banner and then the four man of power fists on the sanguinary guard. So that is my Crusader Force, and hopefully we'll have a running installment as this force grows.